<laughs> so we got out of Hitman Agent 47 Part 2, <laughs> Transporter Refueled. Mm. <laughs> First of all, I got a contact malfunction, so you're seeing me in my glasses tonight. I'll apologize in advance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. God there. They're used to seeing people with glasses on here. Mm. I think Sarah and Violet might be the only ones who don't wear glasses, don't wear glasses. in the videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heck. Um, so, okay, Transporter Refueled, the new Transporter movie, and this is a... <clears throat> First of all, I'm not predicting that this is going to do very well this weekend, mm -hmm. <laughs> mainly because not much really ever does that well Labor Day weekend, because... Not that much good comes out on Labor Day mm -hmm. weekend, but considering how bad something like um, Hitman Agent 47 did in its opening weekend, that had a bigger audience than this one. T that had a bigger theater audience than this did. Three people. This was us and one other guy. One other lonesome guy. Sitting all the way <laughs> the, in the back. At the top of the theater, mm -hmm. up in the middle. By himself. Bless his heart, by himself. Maybe he's a Transporter fan and thought, oh, I'm going to give this a whirl. Or he's just a fan of Transporter the series. Yeah. <laughs> um, man, this movie is really frustrating. It's so frustrating. I like, think, go ahead. No, go ahead, no, go ahead. I think the first thing I said to you when we walked out of the theater, when I, after I asked you if I liked it, mm -hmm. the first thing almost from the beginning of the movie was, I kept thinking, how much better this would be if Jason Statham was saying... <laughs> those exact same words mm -hmm. you know this is a movie that yeah, <laughs> the dog didn't like it either yeah clearly um try to fix that this is a movie that if you're studying on making action movies or you want to make action movies or making maybe you're teaching a class on this kind of on this genre of movie making mm -hmm. this is the kind of movie that's maybe worth watching and and really discussing because i mean i made a joke about hitman agent 47 a second ago mainly because they're both kind of advertised the same way mm -hmm. and they're both probably not going to do very well at the box office mm -hmm. but really they're they're different in that Hitman Agent 47 is a worse movie than this, but was unintentionally hilarious, because at least in that you have Zachary Quinto running around as a bulletproof man, catching bullets in his hand, and just really insane shit happening in that movie. Mm -hmm. This, I can say plenty of good things about this movie. I honestly can. Um, the plot of this movie I like, and it's no better or worse than the plots of any of mm -hmm. the other Transporter mm -hmm. movies. Um, it has a plot line that revolves around a group of prostitutes who have band together to take out this f form, the, this crime boss who they who was essentially their their pimp. There's an opening sequence in 1995 mm -hmm. that shows this guy pretty much taking over all forms of prostitution and crime in this particular area. Mm -hmm. And then it flashes forward 15 years later, so randomly this movie takes place in 2010. Ten. I know, I was sitting there doing the math going, why didn't they break it all the way to 2015? Whenever I see that happen in a movie, I'm like, okay, well now I know when this was written. And you know what I just caught? Hmm? They didn't have those kind of phones five years ago. Oh, they didn't. yeah. They didn't have the swipe uh -huh. with the fingerprinting. Well, like this, they, yeah. Yeah, they didn't have, they didn't have, those were clearly little iPhones. Uh-huh. You know, um, but you, yeah, you could not change anything in that movie at all. Things in that movie that annoyed me probably wouldn't have annoyed me if Jason Statham had been the lead. Because even in movies like this, he's funny. Mm -hmm. This guy wasn't funny. He's played by a guy named Ed Screen, or a Ed Scrine, Screen, I'm not sure. How, he mm -hmm. was, he's was. he been on Game of Thrones before, mm -hmm. but um, hell, I, I like the guy in the TV series better than I like this guy, and I didn't like the TV series mm -hmm. very much. But that's, that's what I mean. This movie... Uh, the plot line I, I, I like. I, I actually cared about these girls' story, and mm -hmm. I, I wanted to see where their story went. I, the action scenes, honestly, are better directed mm -hmm. that they, than they are in, the, in Transporter 3, because you don't have 
fucking Olivier Megaton directing this movie. So I could tell what was going on in the action sequences here. And there's far out stuff that happens yeah. in them, like in the other Transporter mm. movies, like him swirling the car around and taking off noses of um, fire hydrants. Fire hydrants. Yeah. And driving a car on a ramp in an airport and mm. it goes into the 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 play, the walkway and then drives through the airport mm -hmm. after that and yeah. crashes through the window. I mean, it's got cartoonish stuff like that in the other movies, but this movie is not only a testament to how well Jason Statham can carry a mm -hmm. movie, um, it's also a testament on how a movie like this cannot work if you don't have a guy in your lead performance mm -hmm. who's any good mm -hmm. because man the dude in this movie take away from the fact that you're constantly being reminded of Jason Statham mm -hmm. when watching this this guy is not good this guy has he has zero charisma he's humorless he's a block of wood he's completely emotionless he's uh. you don't believe you do not believe it's not a realistic relationship between him and his father. There's no father-son chemistry. There's many, many roles that we can both talk about where uh -huh. there's been fathers and sons, moms and daughters, and oh. you just believe it. They work together. He, but these guys know. They're the like, go ahead. The fact that he's that Ray Stevenson, who plays his dad, is mm -hmm. constantly calling him Junior, Junior. in the movie. Mm -hmm. And then the girls start calling him Junior. Yeah, I'm like, oh man, you don't want to be reminding me of a better movie during this crappy movie. It's it's instantly reminding you of Last Crusade. Only, I want to get on Ray Stevenson here, mm -hmm. because Ray Stevenson is great in this yeah. movie. Ray Stevenson, I fucking love Ray Stevenson. And this is another frustrating thing about this movie, because I'm watching it like, why is this guy playing Frank, playing, playing the transporter, when you've got Ray Stevenson right there, mm -hmm. who you could instantly, if, if you want to replace Jason Statham if, and carry on the series, I, you, fine. Mm -hmm. um, you've got Ray Stevenson right there, who you could have playing the Transporter. Yeah. Maybe he's just a slightly older version mm -hmm. of the Transporter, but he's right there. Like, this whole movie, Ray Stevenson is acting circles around this guy. Clearly. I mean, the, this this utility pole with a light on it right here in my property yeah. is more charismatic than this guy. Ray you know? Stevenson in... He was great. Oh, Ray Stevenson yeah. is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Ray, Ray Stevenson can make... Ray, Ray Stevenson is an actor who can make things work that yeah. maybe not mm -hmm. that maybe wouldn't otherwise. Yeah. But so you have Ray Stevenson tagging along with this guy, and it's like if you were watching Temple of Doom, and you have Sean Connery right. there, but instead of Harrison Ford, you have a ficus tree. No. Like it's this makes no sense. Why did they do this? Mm -hmm. And so. I'm I'm sitting there like Ray Stevenson hands down like why is he not the lead in this or if he's not the lead in this I could see this I could, Jason Statham could carry this movie in his sleep mm -hmm. he absolutely could so you could have Jason Statham there and Ray Stevenson Ray Stevenson couldn't play his dad because Ray Stevenson's only a few years older than Jason Statham but they could be brothers or something yeah, so I don't know be, they could be brothers cousins they could be any any form of relationship if you tried nah, I don't think you could I don't think you could pass them off as as father and son but Jason Statham and Ray Stevenson yeah. no yeah, yeah you really could they're way but, too close in age you know it, you know in and a few other things that came to mind was if the guy ever lost, like, you know, the lead, like, lost his jacket for whatever reason. I, I was, it would be at moments like that that I would be hearing a really cool Jason stay the yeah. line, you know, mm -hmm. like the dry cleaner. Oh, he just got the sad the draw clean. I know. Uh, I mean, this guy can't pull off lines no, like that. No, he can't pull this off. Every time you watch this, there, here's one scene that really breaks down how much better Ray Stevenson is in this. Not just as an actor, but as a character, too. There's a part in this movie where one of the girls gets shot, and Ray Stevenson's character, this shows how he's the most competent one in the movie, because Ray Stevenson instantly jumps into action, is calming this girl down, mm -hmm. is performing a surgery on her, mm -hmm. is telling the other girls to go get him some vodka, to also get some cobwebs so he can make this makeshift kind of bandage to put on her. Like, instantly, he jumps into action. Not that he jumps into action hero, he's... he's Ray Stevenson is in mm -hmm. action hero mode through a lot of this, mm -hmm. but unfortunately he's put on the sidelines through a lot of it, so 
dipshit can be the lead. Mm -hmm. So you have this scene where Ray Stevenson, fully confident, fully is un com under complete control in this scene. Funny, charismatic, everything. Meanwhile, you have our lead, our lead guy, who is just standing there whining. Whining. Is, he, you can, she can bleed out for all I care. She can bleed out for all I care. Mm -hmm. Like, this goes against the rules. Mm -hmm. Like, and his fucking rules in this movie don't make any goddamn mm -hmm. sense. Like, the, when he he's... he keeps breaking them. He keeps... Yeah, and he is whining about them. Just constantly. When the main girl, the main girl hires... She's good in the movie, mm -hmm. but like, she hires him and says, I've got two packages. And he says, I, okay, I don't want to know what's in them. So she tells the weight and everything. And then when he picks her up, the two packages are two of her sidekicks, mm -hmm. these two women who come in the car. And instantly he starts whining. Instantly he starts saying, like, that goes against the rules. I'm not moving. Like, well, motherfucker, you're the one who said you didn't know, want to know what the packages were. Yeah. What's it make a difference if they're fucking people, people or not? Exactly. Yeah. Jason wouldn't, Jason wouldn't have complained about that. Well, I mean, he, <laughs> in the... In the first one, like the package did turn but, out to be a person, exactly, but but it was it was believable complaints. Nothing, yeah. no line that this guy said in this movie, nothing he did or tried could he pull off as realistic. You know, not the relationship with him and the girl, not the relationship with him and his father. He did a few good fight scenes. They were okay. And he carried himself okay. I mean, I can give him that. In the fight scenes? Yeah, because, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he wasn't talking in exactly. them. And he was just beating some mm -hmm. people up. Okay, sure. That must have been the only reason why he was hired. Like... Jason Statham, not only is this... A testament to other action movies that you really need a solid lead in them, mm -hmm. but also towards Jason Statham too, because Jason Statham is more than just that voice, mm -hmm. and that's what this guy is doing mm -hmm. here. He's trying to do a Jason Statham voice, but mm -hmm. you can't be Jason Statham just from simply doing the do voice. His voice. You can't. Jason Statham, he's intimidating. He's charismatic. He's cool. He's funny. And he's and his comedic timing, even when he's not, even when he's not in a comedy, mm -hmm. is. It's perfect. You know, yeah. he can throw these lines and just crack you up. I didn't laugh one time in this movie. Not one single time. Not from time. him. I got a little frustrated at times because there, there were a few lines that were kind of dumb with the girls. I mentioned that to you after we got done seeing yeah. the movie. But, yeah, it was just not that big of a deal. You know, it does. It, it certainly didn't make the, make or break the movie. It, ne it, of course, didn't make or break even any scene. You know. No, not really. I mean, a couple of them were bad and kind of took you out of it a little yeah, bit. But like, but it was like, well, okay, I'll cut them some slack there because at least they're not the lead. Yeah. At least at least they're not the lead mm -hmm. character. This guy, every time this, especially in the first time it shows him in the parking garage mm -hmm. beating the people up, you know what he feels like in this movie? Mm. It feels like whenever you're watching... Um, like a perfume commercial or something that is sort of like it's an action movie or sort of like it's uh, supposed to be like a Bond spoof or something. And so you have this male model in your scene who's maybe saying some like cheesy dialogue and okay, sure, it works for a commercial. That's like, what he feels like. Old, old Spice, like an, the Old Spice. Well, those are supposed to be funny. Yeah. I mean, more like just like a straight up like mm -hmm. cologne or perfume commercial where when this guy beats up people in his parking garage and drives away, this doesn't feel like it's a movie. It, it, this guy drives away and you're expecting like voiceover to come on and saying like, uh, real men fight with blue day Chanel or something. <laughs> and then it freezes in that. Mm -hmm. or you, I'm, I'm not going to be who I'm expected to be anymore mm -hmm. or some bullshit like that. Like, mm -hmm. That's what this feels like. Only they've strung together this series of stupid ass commercials into a movie. Into and a movie. the problem mm -hmm. with his voice too is that it not only is it a bad is it a bad Jason Statham impression, but it also feels like this voice isn't there. Like it feels like in post production they took this guy's voice and, and lowered it. Or lowered it or made it louder or maybe made it more gravelly or something. But whenever this guy talks in the movie, it never feels like this voice is happening in the scene. It feels just as fake as like Bane's audio from like Dark Knight Rises. Uh, I'm not saying that it wasn't the actor's voice i i just mean it really sounds like this voice went through some kind of post-production in this movie i can't necessarily speak to that you would know that better than me but you know 
it he was clearly trying to do a Jason Statham. Oh, you absolutely. Know, At voice. least the guy on the television series is not nearly as good as Jason Statham, but the guy was kind of the guy wasn't simply just doing a Jason Statham impression. The TV series wasn't very good because they tried making it a little too James Bondy. Mm -hmm. But the guy was at least kind at least kind of felt like he was trying to do his own thing with it. This one, this guy isn't. He has one note in this movie, and that's to try to do Jason yep. Statham's voice, mm -hmm. and that's it. it. Even the main bad guy. I think. Oh, that yeah. Was better than the lead. The main bad guy was better than the lead, but the main bad guy was it was a stock villain. Uh, for sure. Yeah, there was absolutely nothing new, unique, nothing special about that guy. Not at all. At all. Like, other hell. than the fact that he was probably more believable in his role, and he wasn't doing an impersonation of anybody. Not really. Other than mm -hmm. I mean, he was just stock villain. Like how the villain in this is so forgettable that. It shows him in the 1995 thing, and then like tw 20 minutes later, when it shows him again, the movie has to stop and show you it that should. it was the same guy. Mm -hmm. It does that for all the villains in this. That's like, the people who made this movie are assuming the audience is going to forget, forget who they who were. They're... Did you notice, though, <laughs> that it didn't seem like him and the other... There was like him and another dark-haired, dark-eyed villain. Mm. Um, and then the blonde guy... The, these two, the main you know villain, and they they didn't seem like they aged any at all. The only one that seemed like he aged was the blonde, and it looked like they just took off whatever blonde wig he was wearing back in '95. It's the same thing with the lead villain too. It was like they just kind of took his yeah. wig off of mm -hmm. him and put some salt and pepper yep. in his hair a little bit. But um, his he, his face didn't look five minutes older. No, like the girls were aged a little bit a better little than bit. the villains were. Not 15 years worth though. No. And I'd still like to know why they cut it off in 2010. That's so weird. And put that, 2015 technology. That is so weird. Like, mm -hmm. whenever I see that in a movie, it usually means, like, well, that's the year the movie was written, I guess. And mm -hmm. and so they just didn't change that in the script. Yeah. Or that's when the mm -hmm. movie was made. <laughs> yeah, and they also, also kind of made it like the BMWs that he was driving, or Audis, whichever they were, mm -hmm. um, were... <laughs> cars that were made in 2010 like you, you know these weren't special like james bond type cars where you know they're one of a kind mm. they were just fast mm -hmm. you know uh fast sedans that weren't around five years ago i mean i was I noticing the, yeah that kind that of stuff i, I was notice. really noticing i i really wasn't noticing any anything like that i um but what i was feeling about the cars is the same way that i felt like when the guy it's the same way when I felt like when I mentioned like this just seems like a perfume ad where the lead character is mm -hmm. a spy I felt that way about the cars too this kind of feels like it's just a mm -hmm. BMW commercial, commercial. and mm -hmm. the lead character is doing spy shit mm -hmm. sure that might work in a 30 second commercial mm -hmm. but here I am watching this 90 minute movie and this guy can't cannot mm -hmm carry it and it's so frustrating because he is the only thing that doesn't make this movie work yeah and that is frustrating you know it's it's like a, a I, I can't give a good analogy as a the, the, when you everything is perfect about it except that not perfect about it's not it, but perfect every, everything but... is good about it except that this way you you don't want to spend money on it i'm not you know watch it on television it's a, it's a good rental Jason Statham makes that completely different. Go to the yeah. theater and see. Oh, it. I absolutely. I'm, mm -hmm. I mean, I will to this day. I will still go see a movie just because Jason Statham oh, is yeah. in it. He's one of those. Um, he he absolutely mm -hmm. is. Jason Statham. I mean, he oozes coolness. He mm -hmm. oozes charisma. And if you're replacing Jason Statham in your series. You gotta bring your A game. Oh, yeah. Like you've you've got to come up with someone, or maybe go in a different direction, or do something different with it. This guy's not cutting it. This guy's he, not Jason Statham. Yeah, and I can't even say he couldn't have cut it if there were no Jason Statham. I agree he with that too. Not. I, I totally agree not. with that. Um, I, I agree that this that he would not have worked. I mean, regardless. But unfortunately, you are comparing him. To the guy that did the role before. Yeah, you mm -hmm. are. Uh, you absolutely are. I mean, m this... I, I I hear people say that about, you know, different James Bonds who they didn't like mm -hmm. um, in comparing them to Sean Connery. Mm -hmm. 
but at least, like, you know, you have George Lazenby, who brought, I th think, was the first actor to really humanize the James Bond character. You have George Lazenby, who was doing similar Connery stuff, but felt more like a, an actual person. At least you have that different. Roger Moore was campier. Whether you like that or not, mm -hmm. that is different. Timothy Dalton, much darker. darker. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Craig, much darker. darker. Brosnan, uh, like More a Connery yeah, type. Roger. Like kind of a hybrid of a mm -hmm. lot of them. There's campy stuff like Roger Moore, and then there's suave, uh, it's the suave nature of like Sean Connery. Mm -hmm. Like at least, whether you like these actors as much as like, somebody who... Yeah. Uh, will always like if, if you're somebody who always says Sean Connery will be the best one whether you dislike these other actors or not and you're comparing them to Sean Connery or not at least they're doing something different mm -hmm. this guy like I, I I know I'm repeating myself here but like you the only you, you can't help but compare him to Jason Statham because that's what he's trying to do he's exactly. trying to do mm -hmm. a Jason Statham impression mm -hmm. um and so I think the movie is yeah, I mean, like there are decent things about it. So I, I, so I, if it's on Netflix or something, sure, it'll kill ninety minutes. the The plot with the girls is good. I I like the main girl in the movie. The direction is okay for the most part. Um, so I I can't say it's not worth. I can't. Damn, that is a big old bug on there. Um, <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, after this, I might have to turn the camera around if it's still there. Um, so, um, <laughs> we have an audience. You guys have no idea this looks how like big something that creature that, is. This looks like something that was on he Willie Scott. He could have played that role better. Yeah. That guy there is cool. This looks like something they were stepping on in Temple of Doom, and it can fly. <laughs> it looked like, wow. I don't know how to describe that. It looked like something from the caves in Temple it of Doom. Was it looked like, yeah, it was this. It was this crawling mm -hmm. and, and then, the <laughs> twist is that it can also fly it didn't God. look like something that could fly mm -hmm. um look like it's something to carry off the truck fuck <laughs> so <laughs> and also like i said at the very beginning mm -hmm. this is if you really want to study this kind of movie this, this, this kind of cheesy kind of b action movie if you want to study this and really know how important a lead actor is to a movie like this, this is worth looking at because it can tell you just how your movie will go wrong only because your lead is completely miscast. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, be a that's, good learning tool. I mean, I could yeah. see people who were in cinema history classes, you know, at at, at USC or someplace, you know, having their professors send them go see this. <laughs> this see is this is what happens when your <laughs> lead can't carry the film. <laughs> just goddamn it! They should have just given it to Ray Stevenson. Yeah. What the fuck? Mm. Uh, that's my final thoughts. That's on the movie. my final thoughts. <laughs> go see uh, Jason Statham and I are neighbors. We live in the same county, so <laughs> I'll be sure this to say, true. dude, why? Why, man? Why? What the fuck? And he'll know. <laughs> He'll know exactly what I'm saying. I won't have to say anything else. I'll just go, why? <laughs> um, he could think you were... So I went, why, Jason Statham? Why were you in the remake of Pink Panther? <laughs> oh, my God. Just I forgot that. Watch the other Transporter movies. Ugh. Watch... <laughs> hell, put in Collateral, which has... Which art, which I know it's debatable, but mm -hmm. he was totally playing the Transporter in the mm -hmm. opening scene of that movie. And Collateral is a fucking masterpiece. Uh, watch so many other Jason Statham yeah. movies than this. Watch, uh, if you wanted just a cheesy bad action movie that to see in theaters, see Hitman Age of 47. Mm. There's so many other things you could be going to see other than mm. this. This is, this, this isn't... Uh, God, unless no. you lose a bet with somebody, don't go see it. Well, there are worse bets you could lose. There you, are could, worse you could end up at War Room. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you didn't ask me to go see that one. But I don't think you would have liked it I very much. Like, I would have been angry at you for asking me. <laughs> Thank you for asking me for this. Tip yeah, this hell yeah. Um, next week is, I think, The Perfect Guy and The Visit. So I I might be at both of those, honestly. I'd see The Visit. If, visit looks I'm, kinda good. I'm looking forward to that because mm -hmm. if it's good, awesome. And mm -hmm. if it's bad, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That one will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> See Goodbye. you next week. <laughs>